Righto, here we go. We're out here today at ARB Cooper's Plains. These guys have got a one of a kind, fully adjustable, full drive track right here in their front yard. Today, we're gonna to show you exactly how a locker works and when you might need one. To do that, I've got a couple of experts. I've got Mark Lacey from ARB's Cooper's Plains, who's been running around with lockers just about since they were invented. And we got Matty Swift with his mighty 70 series. Let's get into it. There's that many different vehicles on the market. We're gonna do our best to show off every application. So we've got a dual cab IFS Hilux for the dual cab market. We've got Swifty 70 series for your full live axle trucks. And then we've even got the 200 series for your new fully electronic vehicles. Uh, let's see how they all perform differently. All right, so here we go. We're on the fully adjustable off-road track. We've adjusted it to suit a, uh, a pretty medium off-road grade. Now up first, we've got the uh, dual cab market. It's the Hilux. We're gonna start off low range, no lockers engaged and see just how far it gets. Then we're gonna engage the rear locker, see how far you can get with just the rear. And then finally for full control, front and rear lockers, full four wheel drive mode, away we go. Up first, we got the Hilux. Bring her up, Mark. Low range, unlocked. Let's see how far she gets. Righto, so as soon as it runs out of travel, front and rear wheels have started spinning. Righto, Mark, run us through exactly what's just happened here. All right, Matt, well, um, pretty normal situation, to be honest, off-road. We've attempted to drive up this simulated hill. Could be a sand hill, or it could be a dirt hill. But like a lot of our consumers or customers, they believe that they have a four-wheel drive. They're sold a four-wheel drive, so they think that it drives all four wheels. It's in low-range four-wheel drive, which means that it's got the best that OE can give it. Both tail shafts are connected and turning. Unfortunately, when one wheel on any axle comes off the ground, you've lost drive to that whole axle. So it doesn't seem right, but when one wheel spins, they think it's driving, but it's actually driving in midair. So all the power is being delivered to that wheel that's in, the, in air or in mud or in sand. So what we've tried to do is we're, we're, we're halfway up this hill and we're stuck because we've got lack of travel or traction. Lack of traction or travel. There you go, that was as far as he managed to get without any lockers. What we're gonna do now is throw the rear locker in, which a lot of your brand new uh, dual cabs has, and let's see how that goes. Fire away, Mark. Well, there you go. Right, so even with the rear locker, he wasn't managed to make it. Let's go back with the rear locker on and we'll have a run with the rear locker engaged. Bit of a real life scenario here. So there you go, nice and easy with the rear locker and just a little bit of momentum, he was able to get up the hill. What we're gonna do now is adjust this ever so slightly just to show you a real world scenario where the hill might be a little bit more difficult or you got your big wombat holes and let's see how far a rear locker will get you. Okay, so I've adjusted the track slightly so he's gonna run out of articulation. Rear locker's on, let's see how you go. Bring her up, mate. There you go, as you can see there, rear lockers on, traction to both the wheels, and he just doesn't quite have enough to get up the hill. Hold it there, mate. Now look, not only could you go back and hit this with more momentum, chances are you're gonna bounce all over the track, front wheels in the air, potential to break stuff, run into things, throw the front locker on. So now we're gonna engage two lockers and have a look at just how much control you now have over this vehicle. Up you go, mate. Nice and easy, no wheel spin whatsoever, straight up. As I always like to say, have a crack in grandpa mode, and if you don't make it, you can always go back and have another go. Full control, two lockers, proper four wheel drive, cannot beat it. Next up, we got Swifty in the big 79, big mud tires, remote reservoir shocks. This thing's got all the fruit. Low range, no lockers. Bring her up, Swifty. Let's see how he goes. Well, 
Holy yeah, I'd hate to know what this thing's worth, but even with all the fruit, as soon as you break traction on both those wheels, you are going absolutely nowhere. Uh, let's throw both lockers on, mate. So both lockers on, we'll flick them both on now. Watch how much control he's got. And now he's a true four wheel drive, all four wheels locked up. When you're ready, bud. And it's that easy. So maybe before you think about buying all the extra bits and pieces, lockers might want to be on your list pretty early. I tell you what, for a bit of fun, I'm going to jack this up, see just how far we can get it to flex and show you just how much control you have with twin lockers. Here it comes, the big 200 series. We've got it in low range with traction control off. Let's see how she goes. Now, just as we expected, uh, brakes traction, and then she's basically stuffed. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna chuck it into hill ascent mode. Um, basically, what it does is it just grabs your brakes. So as you start losing traction, squeezes the brakes on, and you basically essentially jolt your way up the hill. Let's see how he goes. As you can see here, it's working to try and find that traction. And to be quite honest, he'd probably get there if he kept having a go. While you're there, Mark, I'll tell you what, throw your lockers on for us. It definitely does help the hill ascent. There's no if, buts, or maybes. But once again, you just cannot beat twin locked. Look at the control. No wheel spin. You're not bouncing from side to side. You just can't beat it. Twin lockers for the win. All right. Here we go for all you patrol owners out there. This is my second vehicle, GU Patrol. We use this as the camera car. We're gonna bust a myth here for everyone that thinks you should put a front locker in these first and shim up the rear diffs. Let's see how she goes. There you go, unfortunately, this truck doesn't have lockers yet, but we're gonna back her down and I'm gonna show you exactly what I mean by um, shimming the rear diff and how it just doesn't really help you. All right, here we go. So, we got the old trusty camera car. Mark's just gonna jack this rear wheel ever so slightly off the ground. We're in two wheel drive, handbrakes off, foot on the clutch. Now, because this car, you can see there that LSD's just working, okay? Now, Swifty, Take your foot off the cut, clutch nice and slow. Not even enough power to drag the jack. Now look, I challenge you, if you've just had yours all shimmed up, put it in two wheel drive, throw the jack underneath. That ain't gonna help you get up a hill, ladies and gentlemen. Let us know how you go at home. Leave a comment below in the uh, comment section. Myth busted. All right, to wrap it all up, um, I guess one question you're probably going to ask me is, would you ever take a factory locker out and install an air locker? Uh, real quickly, there's a couple of limitations for some of your factories. They'll disengage in reverse. Some will um, disengage at a certain speed. You can't lock all of them in uh, unless you're in four wheel drive. So they're just a few of the limitations. At the end of the day, who needs an air locker? Essentially, anyone who wants to get out there and take on some of the more challenging hills. There's only one way to have all four wheels locked and a true four wheel drive, and that is an air locker.